Well, hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Parker 21. Now this is one of those videos that I recorded last summer to carry me through weeks like last week where I'm super busy and uh, got destroyed in my hard drive. But something happened during the time between when I recorded that video and now that makes it worth re-recording this video. So in a very small way, I'm glad that that video was destroyed because I've got something extra to add to it. So let's dive into it. So if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And if you would like to talk about this pen, um, or my comments about this pen, please feel free to leave a comment down below. So let's take a look at it. So this is a pen that was introduced as a lower co cost Parker 51 in 1948. It sold for $5, had an ordinary steel nib, uh, called Octanium instead of uh, 51's tubular gold nib, and then a friction fit clutchless cap. But that's not the pen that's laying here. 1948 to 51 was the Mark I version. It had a larger section hole which showed more of the feed. The ink dried too quickly and also blobbed. What I have here, both of these, are the Mark II. Now this Mark II has a clip that's a lot like the Mark I. This is Pierre Gustafson's pen. This is that extra I was talking about. Um, this was actually used, uh, well, it, it was, uh, what's the name for it? It was a Mark II Deluxe. Had the original clip, but it was gold-plated. And you can see the typical Parker 21 feed Looks a lot like a Parker 51, but if you dissect this sec this uh, section, yeah, it is the section, you would see that it is just a regular nib buried under there. Unscrew it, it's just a, you know, vacuumatic filler like a Parker 51. No date code on the Parker 21, so don't ask me for one, uh, but this is made since 1952, and of course the model was discontinued in 19... Uh, just lost my line. 1965 because of the Parker 45, which took converters and cartridges came out. So yeah, that was the end. Uh, this is mine. Now mine has a trough clip, which is quite wonderful. Uh, Richard Binder, Richard Binder thinks it's Parker's best clip just from an engineering perspective. And I agree because watch this. This is why I keep this camera running even when I'm writing. Slipped right in there, no problem. Some of my pens are like, oh, come on, go in, go in, go in. And then, you know, it's a battle. Or they catch on the way out. You know, that's one of the things I don't like with the arrow clip. This is awesome. So this trough clip is a great thing. And, of course, mine also says Parker, made in the USA. And mine also has the aerometric filling mechanism. Mine is getting toward empty. Very close to empty. <laughs> but anyway, this is a little weird. It doesn't look like the other one at all. Mine, I believe, and I could be wrong, but I'm going by my research, may be a Super 21. What the Parker Super 21 is, is this is actually the parts from the short-lived model in the Parker lineup called the Parker 41. You'll find Super 21s with uh, some of the more exotic colors that the 41 came in. And it may actually have a tubular octanium nib. Now I have not taken the section apart to find out, but the combination of this clip and this feed make me think that's what it is. Now, it could also be, it's a vintage pen, maybe it is a really old model put together, but I don't believe it is. Now, I did do a review of this pen, but like I said, it was destroyed. I had lovely sample of Bungu Box Sweet Potato Purple ink when I did it. This time, the inks are going to be somewhat less exciting, but I think I'll use the same quote, because why not? Information to the contrary, I'm going to call mine the Parker Super 21. Uh, Pierre Gustafson's pen, I will call the Parker 
21 Deluxe. My Super 21. I apologize for that little blip there. I had the idea of showing the two writing samples going on simultaneously, but as I was starting to write the name of the ink, I realized, oh yeah, that'll be really difficult to do. So I'm not gonna bother. So I'm using Parker Quink Blue Black. So we'll just do our side by side the old fashioned way instead of doing the fancy stuff. Parker Quink. black uh, let's test wetness and flow no trouble keeping up Let's repeat the test. And again, no trouble keeping up. Let's try a nice little smear test. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty wet. And again, pretty wet. And finally, I always, for those of you who are into that kind of thing, I always like to do a reverse writing test. I would say that both are very fine. Um, would you call it extra fine or ultra extra fine? I'm not sure, but very fine, but both very smooth. On the whole, both are very smooth pens. I think mine is just a little smoother, but I may be a little bit biased. Mine was a gift to me actually from a viewer who lives or lived near Janesville, Wisconsin, which is where the part of the USA that this made in the USA pen would have been made. Uh, now I'm going to do a longer form writing sample and what I'm going to do is part way through the sample I will switch from my Parker 21 to Pierre Gustafson's Parker 21. So beginning with my Parker 21 Now switching to Mr. Gust Gustafson's Parker 21.
So now that you've seen how it writes, I'll just do a few final comments while I uh, draw a bit with first, well, it's in my hand, so I'll use Mr. Gustafson's first, and then I'll use mine. Um, so do I like this pen a lot? Yes. This is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful pen. Uh, I would uh, recommend it if you're looking at getting into vintage, because you can find these at very low cost. Uh, and they're relatively simple and fairly straightforward if you want to restore a pen. Uh, these are easy ones to restore. A uh, little less going on than the Parker 51. And, of course, they are lower cost than a 51. So um, mine, the blue one there, I think you just saw, it has a bit of a sweet spot. I don't think I mentioned that in my writing. I haven't noticed that with the other one. But, uh, as I said, mine is a little bit different. I uh, believe mine has a cylindrical or a tubular nib rather than the regular nib. But can't tell without taking it apart. And I just haven't felt the need or desire to do that. Both pens wanted to slide off the pen holder, so we'll just let them be. So uh, th those are my, that's my Parker 21 and Pierre Gustafson's 21. His 21 is heading back to a good home. Uh, as, as of the time you view this, it isn't there yet. I haven't mailed it yet, but uh, I'll be mailing it back this weekend. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for a good vintage pen that's relatively low cost even now, this is one to look at. So, if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, if you'd like to talk about the Parker 21 or your experience with it, or perhaps you'd like to correct my uh, identification of the ages of the two pens, I would invite you to leave a comment down below. I would also add that in the video description, I do have uh, some links to where I got the information so you can see for yourself where I got the idea. It was from Richard Binder's link, the other one honestly wasn't too useful, but I threw it in there just to have a second source. Uh, so anyway, I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.